goes into the database and you can add arbitrary properties to uh, both the nodes and the relationships. So this kind of database is interesting for uh, you know, certain kind of data models, certainly social networking models or um, things where you have a lot of uh, um, attributes and uh, loose schema-free attributes and you want to be able to you know, sort of iteratively evolve your, your data model. This could be an interesting way to go. And since it runs in Java only, um, I thought it'd be interesting to use JRuby to run Rails and then use Active Model to, to pull this, this this graph database and make it a viable um, viable um, uh, data store for, for Rails itself. And in fact, there's a I mean, to do that. There's a library out there. Uh, there's a there's a Ruby wrapper for Neo for J out there. That's that's really nice actually. It's fairly fairly com, uh, complete, and it also includes a. Uh, one portion of the Neo4j library is a it's Ruby library. Is a, it includes Lucene as well, so it, it does all this book, bookkeeping for you of storing your nodes in your database, but it also indexes those nodes in, in a Lucene index as, you, as they're stored. So you can go back and search for the nodes uh, nicely as well. So you get both the you get two you get both properties of, of this graph database. You get the loosely connected graph that you can traverse manually, or you can uh, search with Lucene, which is a powerful Java you know, searching uh, search indexing uh, framework. And you get that all wrapped together in this nice little library. So I wanted to explore what it would take to actually just get this all patched up into a Rails app. And so um, I'm just going to take, take a little bit of a look at the code and um, let's show you what I came up with. Okay, so um, what I did is the Neo4j Ruby library already comes with a way of sort of mixing in your own, um, mixing in the model functionality into your own models. And, and that's what this Neo4j node mixing module is. Um, but I wanted to take it a little bit further and make a model class for Neo4j that looks and feels like, a, like an active record model. And of course the core, the, core of that is really using active model itself. So you see here I've included two pieces of active model, the conversion and the validations um, modules. And the only additional method that I required to implement as part of the active model contract is this persistent method. And so um, in a fairly short order, and there's a little bit of uh, helper code that's around this that's not important to get into right now, but um, again, it's just the the thing to stress is that I was able to adapt this other uh, data engine, data store, into a Rails app with just a, a few short lines of code, and it, I had to experiment with it a little bit. You have to actually learn the API of that, that you know, that new data store. Obviously, you have to know how to adapt it to Rails. But, but uh, Active Model certainly, um, certainly uh, gives us a lot of uh, help in, in, in doing that. So. I'm going to create. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a um, a new web app, and I'm going to start out with an actual regular Rails app with um, Active Record included into it, and that's just so I can cheat and use Active Record generators to generate scaffolding. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And so a nice little byproduct of this demo is that uh, you can see, in fact, the, you know, the real the process of building a Rails app uh, in Rails 3 is, again, just familiar as you would have expected it to be. So I'm going to generate, let's I'll pull this up here so you can see it, maybe it's better to get that into generate person. scaffold person. Okay, so I have my person. And now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply go into, I'm going to change this, uh, the, the, active, the application configuration such that active record is no longer there. And, and the only place that it was actually mentioned for now is just in this this require statement where it says require Rails all. What I'm going to do is instead of requiring all of Rails, I'm just going to require action controller rail tie and um, action mailer rail tie. 
And which is if you if you went so for example if I went and generated Rails um, no AR skip active record. This is essentially the same thing uh, that you'd see if you um, looked at if you generated a new application without active record and then looked at the application um, configuration, you see the same thing here. So this in this case, the new, new application generation process just did this work for me. Um, in fact, there's two other rail ties that I should have there, but I don't, don't need active resource and I'm not using testing right now, just for this demo. So um, I turned off active record. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is um, I have a custom gem file that I'm going to move into place. So another thing I didn't mention at all um, was the whole bundler, bundler framework, uh, bundler library, and that's a, a brand new library for managing the dependencies in your Rails app. Um, and Bundler has had a fair amount of um, coverage in the blogs lately, and it's still kind of a fast-moving library, so I didn't want to dig into too much depth on Bundler in case something changes. But the basic idea, as you'll see in a minute, um, uh, if you look at the gem file here, uh, you, you have a single gem file on the root of your app, and you just say, that's not right. Oops. So um, the, in the gem file, you can declare both regular Ruby gems. You can also declare uh, gems from Git repositories and from directories. And so what I've done here is um, I have some. I have some dependency declarations based on some local paths in my system. That's just for convenience because I wasn't online all the time. And when I ran Bundler, I wasn't necessarily able to, I didn't want it to, to pull down and clone the entire uh, Rails Git repository for, for uh, space, space savings. But So here you basically have your, your gem file as a declaration of all the things, the dependencies in your app. And so I've got um, this part, I, th these two lines are basically to use um, the very edge of Rails. You can see it's very similar to this one down here. I just didn't use this because, like I said, I didn't want to use the Rails GitHub repository and pull down the whole thing to my machine. And then this Neo4j Rails is this little helper library that I that I wrote. And notice here I didn't actually declare the Neo4j library anywhere. That gets resolved as a dependency through the Neo4j Rails um, project. So if I do the next step when you when you are starting a new application, you modify the dependencies. Um, you should Call bundle install, which is the bundle command that makes sure that all the dependencies in your application are valid. And so we'll run that real quick and make sure that everything is, is okay. I think everything should be there because I've been practicing this demo. Ooh. 